very warm welcome to the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show. And today's show is Hellraiser by the Menace, which captures the life of an English former professional darts player. He won two world championships and was the first player to win both BDO and WDC. Now the PDC, of course, world championships in 1991 and 1994, respectively. He was nicknamed the Menace after the Beano character, Dennis the Menace, and ref he reflected this by wearing red and black Dennis the Menace style shirts and using red and black flights. Yes, folks, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome on the show, Dennis Priestley. Welcome to the show, Dennis. Thank you very much, Russell. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on, it really is. You've had a really, really good good professional life in darts. But of course, it all starts from the, at the beginning, Dennis, as you know. So you were brought up in Mexborough, West Riding of Yorkshire, and you're originally a coal merchant by trade, and you didn't enter professional darts until you're almost 40 years old. A rather late start, Dennis, especially when you compare the youngsters that are on the professional darts circuit today. You know, Luke Little is 16. The current world champion, Luke Humphreys, I mean, he, he's young too. I mean, it's an incredible late start. Well, yeah, Lord Comfrey's is 28 years of age, and that's uh, more or less when I picked a set of darts up. Wow. Uh, obviously, it was, uh, I was born in 1950, so was, when, I won the, when I won the embassy in 91, I was 40 years and a half. Wow. And I wasn't a professional until after winning the embassy. That's when I decided to give it a go. An incredible start, isn't it? An incredible start. I mean... Really, why, why, why the late start as a professional darts player, a good player too, and what is the inspiration behind you joining the professional darts family? And it is a family too, as we know, at this time of your life. You know, okay, you won the embassy, but well, I, I, I was a gradual build-up to being a fairly decent player. Um, mm -hmm. I started in my local pub, the Miners Arms at Mexborough, South Yorkshire, not West Yorkshire, by the way. I best uh, <laughs> stay best corrected get one before I get to live. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, I, it was a double board only, no trebles on the board, and we stood uh, nine inch closer to the board. And um, I could hit fairly decent scores and then progressed onto a treble board in, uh, I think it was the late 80s, after after Leighton Reese winning the very first embassy in 78 in Nottingham, beating John Law in the final. Yeah. And um, so it was steady progress for me. I uh, in, started in the pub game. Uh, then I, I got a little bit better and started playing in the Super League where every game you play and every ab uh, dart you throw on, there's an average taken and sent into the headquarters of Yorkshire Darts. Got selected to play for Yorkshire. As you can tell as I'm going on about this, I've spoken about <laughs> this many, many times. Indeed. I got selected for Yorkshire. I started playing for Yorkshire in 83, 84, something like that. Steady progress uh, to three or four years after that. I got picked for England. And um, I, I won tournaments, um, £1,000 tournaments, up and down the country before that. So I, I would imagine the top professional guys did know who I was. Uh, but I don't think they expected uh, how I performed in the, in the embassy on my first attempt. Absolutely. And, of course, in 1989, you did reach... Uh, the, the final of the News of the World Darts Championship, where you were beaten by the experienced Dave Whitcomb. And I do remember Dave, of course. You then reached the semi-finals of the 1990 Windmill World Masters, losing to eventual champion Phil Taylor. So some early career successes. Yes, that's right. Um, the, uh, the News at World were a, a big experience. That was played in, uh, in London, the Hammersmith Odeon. And it's probably the only time I... I missed a double all days uh, when I had a chance to win. I had two darts at double double eight. Uh, on the wires, it wasn't as if, if I missed by a mile. Mm -hmm. And I said to Dave after the eight, uh, I think he wanted tops. He went single 20, big 10. And he says he closed his eyes when he hit double, double five. Wow. I wish he'd have kept him open. <laughs> He was a great player, wasn't he, in his time, Dave Whitman? Yeah, Dave, yes, yes. A good, uh, a good, steady professional, Dave. Yeah, he certainly was. He certainly was indeed. The great you... Jockey Wilson was in that tournament as oh, well. Great Jockey Wilson. Um, fantastic. I can remember seeing a, a picture going back, and I've got it clearly in my mind with Jockey Wilson. Um, obviously the great and our, our late friend, of course, Eric Bristow. Um, and uh, the big man himself. Um, 
Oh, crikey, what's his name? Crikey. Cliff Lazarenko. Cliff Lazarenko. How can I forget Cliff Lazarenko? Incidentally, Russell, it's, I think it's four years today that Eric died. Yes, it is. And it's still on my mind, as, as I think it is most people that uh, that met, met Eric. He, had, he was an inspirational man, wasn't he? He really was. Sensational character. He was definitely a character. <laughs> That's for a sure. A one-off. Oh, absolute one-off. You'll never see another, another Eric Bristow ever. I don't think, particularly in darts, it's, it's it's a different game now, isn't it? It's moved on into a different era, era, I should say. Different, yeah. There's a big different standard, you know. I mean, obviously the equipment's uh, slightly better, you yes. know, the tungstens and uh, the wiring's better on the boards. Not as much wiring to, uh, to you know, to get a bounce out up with the dart. So it is, yeah. it is improved it slightly. I think you're right. Although watching uh, darts at the moment, every Thursday, of course, the Premier League darts, I absolutely love Premier League darts on a Thursday. There has been surprisingly quite a lot of darts bouncing out. I've noticed that every week. Uh, the thin wires, but they seem to come out quite regularly. Yeah, well, that's how good they are now. They can hit the wires. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Aim for the wires. That's why you get it. But it's a competition they have before the tournament. How many bounce outs can we get and still win? Maybe it's a well, you ask any professional dart player if they want to say sixty-five, Russell, yes. and they go they go at twenty-five. I can assure you, they aim for the ball. Yes, yes, and that's visible. Hoping not it? to hit it, obviously. Yes, indeed, indeed. No, I can see that. And there's quite a lot of shots actually in Premier League now where they're going for the middle, aren't they? Twenty-fives and fifties more yeah, readily than yes. they used to. Yeah, uh, the they game's are. changed. They're using, they're using, they are. They are this modern day player. They are using more of the board. Yes. Uh, different combinations than we thought of. Yeah, because I've noticed a lot now. I mean, I aim for the 20s, get for the treble 20s, but the dart, dart lands in a bad place. They don't carry on at the 20s, drop down to the 19s, or they're not going to the 18s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quite quite a that, different game these days. That used to be my cover shot, treble 18. Nice. I've got a, a bad lie with the uh, treble 20. Yeah. Just pop across the board to the 18s. Yeah, well, you're not moving. You're not moving your eye line or or your body stance uh, as much. No, you're not. You're quite right there, and still able to get a good score if you hit the treble. Yeah. Treble 18. Yeah, it's only reasonable. It's only a few points less than. Uh, well, you, you score 54 instead of yeah. 57. Yeah, that's it. So there's nothing in it at all, is there? Let's be honest. No, no. Yeah, and that, that suits your style of play, Dennis, which you obviously did, and that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I had, uh, quite a lot of one to eights in my time. Yes, I can imagine. I can imagine. You then started your uh, meteoric rise on the darting circuit, and shortly after becoming a news agent, you won the 1991 Embassy World Championship. You mentioned it slightly earlier. After beating our deal friend, and of course now the late Eric Bristow, 6-0 in the final. I mean, Eric, 6-0 in the final. How possible was that? You must have been on fire. You had, a def you, you had defeated defending champion Phil Taylor in the quarterfinals. And uh, the 1988 champion Bob Anderson in the semis. So some huge scalps along the way too, Dennis. You must have been. You must have some fond memories of this tournament. I have. I've got Stories. real fond memories. I mean, I, some people will say that I uh, had a, an easy couple of games leading up to it, which, which on paper, it wasn't. There wasn't easy, but uh, they, they turned out to be easy. There were three mm. nil. You know, a couple of three nils. Um, Magnus Carris was my first game. Magnus uh, returned to Embassy simply because he made the quarterfinals the year before. Yes. And Bob Suneev had represented Canada in the Embassy quite a, quite a few times. And um, I, and I, when I looked at it, um, I'm thinking, well, if I can get to the quarters, then I'm I'm going to be asked, um, you know, to come back to play in the, the foreign year's Embassy. So that was my goal. And I reached that target. And then, uh, obviously, I was playing Phil Taylor, who would beat me a couple of times prior to that. Yes. And um, I was three sets to one down and came back and, uh, you know, won 4-3 with some big finishing. And But Phil was the only guy who did have a dart to uh, to knock me out of that tournament. He certainly did, and we'll come on to some of those a bit later on in the show. But, you know, you are great friends with, with Phil Taylor as well, aren't you? You're, you're, good, you're good buddies. On and off the well, dark circuit. Yeah, we, I mean, obviously, we don't live in each other's pocket. Mm. Uh, he sends me these daft videos now and again. <laughs> uh, there were a beauty uh, other day, one, two, two motorbikes, one coming one way, one coming the other. Mm. And uh, it must have been in a warm climate because the coconut fell off the tree. 
<laughs> and hit the guy coming towards him. I mean, the, the million to one chance that that, that timing would, would be like that. And hit him smack on the head. <laughs> I know I shouldn't laugh. And then he veered off into the into the grass bird. And uh, I do hope he was okay, but it, it was hell of a hell of a shot. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, a million to one chance of it happening. I mean, <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. life, isn't it? These things happen, as we know. But um, wonderful, wonderful little story. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, with Phil Taylor, we uh, when we when we did split away, it was very difficult. We had to we had to play in America quite a lot mm. in Canada, and uh, to go over there, we'd we'd have his own airfares to pay for, his hotels. And the, the prize money was very, very, very poor, to be fair. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the, the obvious thing and the financial thing was uh, try and find a good uh, good player to, to play in, in pairs with you. Uh, cricket, 501 cricket pairs, mm -hmm. 501, uh, 501 scores. You know, there were, there, were mixed, uh, there were mixed doubles, there were mixed triples. You had to play all them in a, in a weekend. So, we just used to pull as winnings. Fantastic. Yeah, because darts wasn't very well paid going back in the day, was it? And it took a while to bring the numbers up in, in terms of the payment, prize money, which right, exactly has now. I mean, now it's incredible, isn't it? But back in your day, it wasn't quite the same at all, was it? No, it was it was uh, very poorly paid. Mm, exactly, yeah. And you'd win the, the 1992 Windmill World, World Masters, I should say. And you also picked up many other BDO open events between 1991 and 1993. For a man starting in the world of professional darts late in life, and I say late in life, it's not really, at the age of 40, in the world of professional darts, you were, you were doing very well, Dennis. Are there any particular dart competitions during this two-year period that you have great memories of? And I'm, I'm sure there are some wonderful stories too, even backstage, you could enlighten us to. Well, yeah, obviously the, the Windmill World Masters always comes to mind because it was um, it was a great final. Uh, you yeah. know, I play well, the semi was a great semi uh, against Alan Warriner. Mm. Um, I was fortunate to, uh, to be on the the winning side. Um, I, I hit some big finishes to really kill that game off with a, a 35 point something per dart average, which was, you know, in them days, that's that's 105 plus. Yes. Um, and, the, the you know, they talk deliriously about it if you're in the hundreds now. But yeah, I was two, two sets to nil down in the final against Mike Gregory. Another one was uh, passed away, unfortunately. Yeah, sadly. Yes. Um, and I think Mike did have one or two darts to to clinch a, a win, but I fought back and uh, won three sets to two with with another hundred plus average. Mm. One game going over uh, fifteen darts in that final, and That's that was incredible. the last game. <laughs> Seventeen darts. So any backstage antics, Dennis, that were going on? Uh, I know what no. it's like backstage because some real characters in those days. Yeah, well, it, it, like you know, like you said, it was a, a darting family. I mean, obviously, when you're in each other's pocket all the time, you you, you, you know, you do have uh, bits of arguments now and again. Of course, you do. Uh, but uh, all in all, you know, it was uh, wasn't a bad uh, wasn't a bad setup, really. No, it's it's fairly good. I can remember going with Keith Denner actually to um, the World Semi-Finals. Actually, it must be about 2015 or 16. Now, I think it was. Um, and uh, it was a fantastic final. I was in the players' bar having a few drinks and uh, so on with, with a few of the players. And then walks Eric Bristow. I think it was after the first semi-final. He walks in and all I could hear was, oh, I see they let all the waste and strays in here now, Lord Russell. <laughs> right. He turned around and said, Eric, with a big smile on his face. And, you know, it's just great camaraderie, wasn't it? Or still is. Yeah. So I'm, well, I'm, I've been told it's uh, got a little bit edgy uh, now again. Mm. Uh, some people won't practice in the same room, etc. I suppose it, it uh, comes with territory once big money starts coming into the game. Uh, mm. You know, it, it uh, heightens the edge a little bit more, I would imagine. Yeah, but I guess it does. Still, um, the question you asked me with with the the ninety nine, you know, nineteen ninety two that year was particularly great year for myself. Mm. Unfortunately, with the splitting up, I never got a chance to. Uh, to then defend the 12 titles I won in that year. Oh. Uh, British, British Open, British Classic, yes. Win My World Masters, uh, Canadian Open, many many in uh, America. 
Yes. Uh, Welsh. I'll tell you what, the Welsh Open was one of the hardest um, I, I uh, competed in. There was above 3,000 entries. Wow. And I played off all, over a weekend. That's and uh, I was absolutely cream crackered when we'd, uh, when we'd done. Mm. But I, I, I got a, you know, I triumphed. Uh, I think that in the final was either uh, Alan Warren or, or Rod Addington. Mm. One was a semi and one was a final. I forget which way it was now, all that tired. Yes, I can imagine. And not to be able to defend your titles, that, that is that is depressing in some ways, isn't it? Um, yeah, the other, the, other, the, the other real big one in the BDO then at that particular time, besides the Winmar World Masters and the Embassy, was the Gold Cup. Yes. Which I'd won, I'd won two years on the on the bounce and didn't get chance to, you know, defend that. Plus, being England captain, never been able to, you know, achieve that honour of of doing it after being selected to be the captain. Yeah, we'll come on to that because that was a disappointing, um, disappointing part. Which is my next question, really, because um, you were you or you are, I say, an original founder member of the World's Darts Council the WDC, uh, which is now, of course, the PDC, as you mentioned earlier on, which split from the British Darts Organisation, the BDO, in 1993. And as a consequence, you were precluded from assuming the role of England captain, which you just mentioned, which you had been awarded shortly beforehand. I mean, this must have been a blow, Dennis, as captain, captain your country. It's a huge achievement in any sport. You must be devastated. Yeah, I was at the time, but, um, uh, you know, I, I got to look at the bigger picture at, at that particular time. Mm. We got to a situation, Russell, where um, we was uh, playing the embassy. I played the embassy in January of 91 and we didn't have anything else to play in until the April. And right. I think that was a competition what was put together very quickly. It was uh, anybody who had uh, won a title with World in it. Um, mm. And that was played back down uh, at Lakeside in April. And look what have it, um, I, I managed to win that one. I was, um, we could have a bet then, I was 11 to 2. Wow. And we had, uh, we had a collection in the local pub, well, I used to go in Red Lion, and I ended up uh, putting 600 quid on at um, 11 to 2. <laughs> That's so, nice, isn't it? Nice, nice learner, as they, as they would but, say. But when I came up, when I, when I came up, uh, up to paying everybody out, and the, I had 20 on, I had 20 on, I thought, I can't remember taking 20 off you, but yeah, <laughs> here's 130 quid with your 20 quid back. So I didn't, you know, I didn't end up with the deal myself. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah I'm, we, I'm sure a few we went, chances. We went waltzing in uh, in Corals, but bookmakers in, I think mm. it was Aldershot. Aldershot, all places, yeah. yeah. We went, when we went down. And uh, I went to counter. Can I, can I have six hundred quid on Dennis Priestley, please? In to, in these starts, well, she shot off like a <laughs> a rat up a drain pipe uh, oh, okay. to go to see Gaffer in back. Anyway, she came back. She says, "Yeah, we'll accept your bet." So that was that. Wonderful. So it wasn't good for them, but it was good for you. Well, maybe not good for you, but good for the ways and strays that said they gave you twenty pounds. <laughs> they come out okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good story, though, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's as good as the story as uh, getting back after winning the embassy, uh, yeah. back to my local Red Lion. Because um, I had to go to a dinner uh, and do a bit of a speech after embassy yes. in, in in Lakeside. And then we drove back up home. I think it was two and a half, three hours back home. And it, we got we got into the into the pub and uh, let us air down, as you would say. Yes, and uh, to. contrary to all, all my friends, that Yorkshiremen are not that tight because I stood the bar bill that night. Oh, well done, Dennis. That's great stuff. Well, next time I meet you out in Tenerife, I'll keep you to stand in the bar bill there as well. No, of course not. You've got the you've got the meals to buy next time I see I you. I have. Mate. I have indeed. It's on me next time. Yes, we had a great meal, didn't we? Going back with two. Yeah, the short on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be my time next time out. Uh, what <laughs> are you out in Tenerife next, by the way, Dennis? Um, hopefully, late. October into November time, and then back for his winter break in January. Yeah, I'll bear that in mind because uh, always it's a winter holiday island, what? isn't it? So it's fantastic. What not to turn up? Yeah, no, I will turn <laughs> up. I'll definitely be turning up around that time. It's, it's, it's a winter isn't it? It's where yeah. you go for your winter. Oh, sun. It's, yeah, it's nice. You know, you get up in the morning, it's sunshine, it's eighteen degrees. Oh. Back home, you, it's grey, miserable. <laughs> you know. And, Probably never see daylight all day. So well, I'm just, very fortunate. 
And I've just come back. I was there last week for 10 days. And, you know, it's 28 degrees every day. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Mm, um, that's so right. A bit of, bit of sunshine, a bit of vitamin D into the body again. It's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yes, yes. But after your um, disappointment of not, not uh, being able to captain your country, England, of course, on the plus slide, you did win the inaugural WDC World Darts Championship in 1994 when you beat Phil Taylor 6 1 in the final. This high point was surrounded by several wins on the WDC's new professional circuit, including Skoll, the Skoll match play, UK match play, Antwerp Open, and Dams a Samson Darts Classic, all in 1993 and 1994. I mean, a huge couple of years at the top in darts, Dennis. I mean, that's just incredible. Phil Taylor 6 1 in the final. That's that's a that's a classic, isn't it? Well, yeah, and, and you know, it was similar similar format to, um, uh, to the embassy. After five after five sets, you you had you, you know you had a break, um, and then Phil came back and uh, won the first set back. And I thought, oh, is this the big fight back? But I managed to clinch it clinch it in the seventh set, which was uh, which was nice. But I didn't realise uh, what was uh, created. Yeah. The, the monster of Phil Taylor. He didn't like that uh, that thrashing I gave him, and he uh, he knuckled down and and worked really hard at his game, and hence uh, was you know what he's achieved. Absolutely, and a huge achievement too. Uh, when you think about it as well, I seem to remember the story. I mean, it was Eric Bristow, wasn't it, that sort of nurtured um, Phil, Phil yeah. Taylor into the game. Eric spotted his talent. Sure, yeah. he did absolutely. And without Eric doing that, Phil arguably probably wouldn't be where he is today. So great man, Eric. Another accolade that uh, we can, we can, we can uh, put on story, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant man. I mean, since then, <laughs> since that that six one win, uh, you then you you had been a PDC World Championship runner up four times in nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety eight, and two thousand, losing to Phil Taylor on all four occasions. So after beating Phil Taylor in the nineteen ninety four final, Phil certainly became a bit of a nemesis thereafter for you. I mean, please tell us more. I mean, he wanted obviously to beat you every time he could, or anybody actually. If you'll yes. case. Yeah, he was uh, relentless in his pursuit of, uh, you know, the achievements, what he's achieved. Mm. Uh, the very the very first one, Russell, uh, the format was completely different to what uh, previous world championships had been because we uh, was in uh, groups of eight, mm. three in a group. And my very my very first game uh, was against Jockey Wilson in, uh, in our it. group, which, I think there was myself, Jockey, and Graham Stoddard in in my group. Yes. And me and me and, me and uh, Jockey had the honour of uh, throwing the first starts. And I, I think I went first, and I hit one forty. And thinking, well, that's a, a nice start. And Jockey followed with one eighty. So yeah. they were the very first six starts thrown on the PDC, well, World Darts Council as it was then, uh, to hit the board one forty one eighty. Brilliant. What a way to start the PDC. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that at all, can you? It's fantastic. Six starts and uh, brilliant stuff altogether. I mean, you had been a three times world match play runner up to losing to <laughs> American Larry Butler in 1994. That man, again, your emesis, Phil, Phil Taylor in 1995 and Peter Iverson in 1996. So, you, know, you were so unlucky not to get over the final line again, Dennis, on on, on so, so many occasions. I can't imagine how this must have felt with each final you reached. Did you ever start to doubt, or did doubt ever set in at all? No, I, Phil I, Taylor. I didn't as it, as it uh, all, all came to fruition. Um, I, I lost to Larry Butler, uh, and I should never have lost that game. I, 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 I kick myself, and yeah. I, wake, I wake up many times with a cold sweat. I was seven two up at one one stage, and he asked me to have a word with the MC to uh, see if he could uh, get the, the audience to be quiet. Well, I was in the zone. I you know I couldn't uh, hear the, the noise or anything because I was really really focused. And then after that, we came out after break, and I did nothing but hear the, the damn crowd then, and it uh, it cost yeah. me that that final. And That's... then then against Phil, obviously. Uh, it was a good final, but Peter Everson was red hot that week. Mm. He beat Phil in the early early rounds at eight one, you know. So he, he were really red hot, but I, I was still in with 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 a chance there. I think mm. I lost something like sixteen forty, you know, 
something like that. Yeah, close matches like that. Yeah, which is unlucky, isn't it, really, to be honest? Yeah. Uh, you never got over the line, did you, in, those, in that? No, particular no. Particular. Yeah, my, one of my favourite venues as well, Winter Gardens. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fair to say it's every cart player's favourite venue, isn't it? Because it's also based on uh, games rather than sets. So, as you know, in sets you can win more games and still lose. Uh, I'd sooner, uh, Russell, to be, if you'd have asked me that question, sets or, or uh, straight legs, mm. I'd go for sets really? every time. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, but I know a lot of players love the Winter Gardens venue. It's some some place to go, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'll look to get there myself, actually, at some stage. I've not been there, but I do need to go. I do need to, need to get up there. Yeah, watch. every Jul every July. It used to run into August in, in the early years. Yes. Because uh, I, I remember a few times it clashed with uh, Glorious Goodwood, and that's always early early August. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually around, the starts around about middle of July, around about my birthday. Wonderful. Fair, and runs for 10, I think it's 10 days it runs. Yeah, it does. And Russ Bray, when I spoke to him, he did actually say he'd get me some tickets. So I'll, I'll try and hold Russ to that. Why not indeed, you know, so we'll see. Uh, get backstage as well, meet some of the guys. Why yeah, they, they tell me he's retired from uh, the MC yeah. work. He has. He's, he's doing, um, he still does competitions, but he doesn't do the PDC yeah. level of no, stuff right. anymore. Yeah. I think he, he's given up the travel, really. Um, does his exhibitions and does yeah. small, small competitions and fair play. Of course, we've been knocking on a bit now, Russ. Well, I don't think he's quite at that retirement age, but um, yeah. He's obviously slowed up. He's he sold well, his I... lovely house, didn't he, and moved into a, a bungalow. He told me so. Obviously, that was all part of the the yeah, pre-retirement wind, winding down. Yeah, winding he's down. done exactly same as what me and Jenny are. Yeah, Jenny moved. Yeah, to a bungalow. Oh, I don't blame you. I mean, getting back to Larry Butler. I mean, you know what he did about the crowd nuisance. You couldn't hear it. I mean, that must have been some kind of game plan to put you off, mustn't it? Really, in the final. Well, looking back, yeah, I never, I never thought of it like that at the time. But um, looking back, it, it, if it, if it was a ploy, what what he thought of, it, it, you know, it did work. I can assure him. Yeah, it did work because you were on top of your game, and all of a sudden, yeah, you weren't. yeah, yeah. That's... I will, I will cost him. Yeah, that's bad, bad, bad sportsmanship, shall we say, in my book. But there we are. It obviously worked out for him, <laughs> not yeah. for yourself, sadly. However, um, between 1991 and 1994, you were the only player to win more than one Grand Slam major title, winning three, whilst you also claimed more top professional events or, uh, or even dart on the dart circuit, the BDO and WDC, than any other player, and in doing so, attained the number one ranking from November 1994 through to April 1995. So what was it like to be the world number one darts player, Dennis? It didn't seem any different at all at the time. I mean, um, becoming PDC world number one was very nice, but I was also the BDO world's number one Yes. at the time of the split. And apparently uh, it was a bit embarrassing for the BDO because they just couldn't wipe us, wipe us straight off the, uh, the sheets. <laughs> I was still, I was still top, top, you know, number one for, for another probably year running and, yeah. and didn't even play in BDO. Oh, that's quite crazy, isn't it? Based on your previous results. So, yeah, yeah it's just exactly. strange how it works, isn't it? But um, <laughs> that's life, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you say you were, you were number one in the world completely because you were BDO and PDC world number one. So, brilliant. Yeah, double, double world number one, I suppose. Yeah, double of the game. Never, thought, you... of, never thought of it like that. Yeah, oh, it's another, another first almost, isn't it, really, in the world of Dennis Priestley? I mean, that's brilliant. And that's how I would look at it. You're probably the only person ever to be the reigning BDO and PDC world champion. It's like being number one in the in the golf and with Liv and number one in the world with the Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Undisputed world champion. There you go. That's a good term to use. You were the undisputed world champion and fantastic too. But of course I didn't realize, I didn't realize I'd I'd got three majors in that one one particular yeah. year. That's something what what um, I didn't realise. Yeah, no, I've got my we, research. We dallied with the quadro board. Uh, okay. If you remember, didn't we? Yes. We ran, We had that for three or four years, which, which was which was unique at time, really. Um, you Very. know, a segment what you could score 80 points. 
uh, he probably needs something like that bringing into it now. Uh, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. I, I, this happens to me before, and I, I now switch my phone off because you guarantee it will go off when you're in yeah. the middle of a show. Yeah, um, it needs something to to be entirely different. Um, the quad, bring the quad row board back. At, mm. You know, uh, that's a, a tournament they could uh, set in the calendar. Even the one what I lost to uh, Mike Gregory in the final at Norwich. I think it was the Larder Classic. Mm. Uh, that was um, level darts, equal darts. You know, we we do the one um, double in, double out, and this one was level darts. You could actually. Hit the five or one first, but if you'd uh, if you'd gone first to the hockey, yes, uh, the guy following you say he only wanted forty and you you checked out on fifteen darts, and he wanted forty and hit it with his first or second dart, he he won that leg, he, he wiped that leg out. Wow, that's certainly a different format, isn't it? Yeah, you, you'd won a leg and then you'd lost it. Yeah, which which made, made it dramatic, you know. Yeah. It's, because now we're we're into a situation where it's it's all five or one, bang, bang, bang. It is, and uh, usually a lot of eighty. Well, sorry, a lot of uh, twelve dart finishes, nine dart finishes. Now, yeah. it's consistent, isn't it? Very consistent these days. Not like well, it was I, in the old days. I think it was. I think when we was played the the quadro board, I think you could get up and in, uh, in oh, what was it? Uh, I think it was seven or eight darts. You, I think it was yeah. seven darts. You couldn't. Wow. Well, that's some some game. Yeah, because you could get 240 and then uh, 230, what would that be? 236 or something like that. Then use two darts to uh, to to set a double up. I think it was seven darts. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd have to do my sums again. It's, a lot, yeah. it's that long since. Absolutely. The very first one was in Chesterfield at uh, Aquarius Nightclub. I played jockey in the final there, actually. But I'd, I'd so start before the rest of them that um, going for the treble, uh, quadro, the, the quad part for 80 points was um, a very difficult uh, thing to do because it was just as small as the ball. Yeah. So I would I would play on treble 20. And if I got two in treble 20, and then I'd have a pop at the uh, the quad, the quad yeah. 20. And that's how, that's how I played it. And I was successful with that. With that tactic, well done. And if you're successful, don't change it. Keep going. Don't well, I did. For, I, I did. I, I mean, I won it the year after as well, beating yeah. Bob Anderson in Sheffield at the uh, at a club in Sheffield. Fantastic. Dial House. I think that's been been raced to the ground. Yeah, sadly. I mean, Bob Anderson <laughs> used to come on stage with a horse, didn't he? He did. The 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 they did it once at. Um, at Circus Tavern. That's it. And, and the seat, I think it was just, I don't think anybody could ride it because I think the ceilings were too low. Exactly. It, yeah, they let it, they let it, let it in, uh, <laughs> you know. I mean, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be allowed now because oh. there was crowd. I mean, you did, only got the kick out. Exactly. Backwards, sideways, and somebody would get, get killed. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's they, dangerous must, they, must, they must have picked a, a real quiet, uh, beautiful, hot job. Or maybe not. Maybe in those days, that's what, what what life was like. No one really cared about health and safety, did they? It just happened. An innovative idea. A limestone cowboy. Oh, let's come on with a horse. That's a brilliant story. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. But of course, um, Dennis, your darts ascendancy, which it was, was forcefully, and I use that word very loosely, forcefully, ended by Phil Taylor's World Championship and World Match Play Triumphs in 1995. You did, however, notch up further a uh, major televised title that later that year, the inaugural PDC World Pairs, partnering our great and now late, uh, sadly, of course, Eric Bristow MBE. Another yeah. first, Dennis, and a great yes. PDC World Pairs final. A win with Eric. I mean, brilliant. Yes, it was. Um, what year was that one, Russell? That was 1995. 95, yeah, that was all that um, in air. Wow. Uh, Scotland, yes, uh, we triumphed. I'm not sure if we didn't play Phil Taylor in the final or, and Jockey Wilson. He may well have done. Yeah, I didn't didn't look into that myself. Maybe I should have done to talk about that yeah. story. But um, well, I ought to remember that it's a long time ago. <laughs> Absolutely, is a long time ago. But another another first in the world of Dennis. Yeah, Dennis, yeah, Menace, we, uh, I mean, 
Yeah, it, it was it was good. It was played the year after at Salford uh, Rugby Club. Mm. And we're driving to the venue, and uh, I'm thinking, this is a rough old area here. Uh, <laughs> there was like a, a 50 gallon drum uh, in Middle Street to fire. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's Oof. going off here? Anyway, yeah. we, we had no we had no trouble. It was it was quite good actually. Ronnie O'Sullivan came to watch us as a as a young teenager. Wonderful. Yeah. What a good man Ronnie is too. I've worked with Ronnie. Lovely. He fun. always done great things, hasn't he? Oh, amazing things. And you know, when you think of his age now, um, I wouldn't write him off winning his eighth title um, later this month or next month, beginning of next month. Well, it, it looks it looks like is it good form yesterday? Uh, oh, it certainly did. Nice ten two victory. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's 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 almost if he wants to win, he'll win. If he can't be bothered, he won't. That's really the tactic. <laughs> it does seem like that, doesn't oh, it? It certainly does. Yeah, <laughs> I've got Steve Davis coming onto my show. Uh, I think we're talking about the first of May, um, halfway through or towards the end of the last weekend of the World Championships, Snooker World Championships. So we'll be talking to Steve about his life, but also talking about um, what's going to happen in the World Championships. And I'm sure Ronnie will be there, there and thereabouts. He's bound to be, isn't he? Well, you think so, yeah. Um, I mean, a, a good little, uh, good little tailor when uh, Ronnie turned up to watch the pairs at Salford. Yes. Uh, my youngest son Adam would be, well, very early teen. He might not have even been a teenager. Uh, so that you reckon that was ninety five? He'd probably be, well, he was born in eighty six. So he, you know, he'd, he'd only be probably nine ten. Yeah. And he went up and asked Ronnie for his autograph. And Ronnie says, no, I'm not giving you my autograph unless you give me your autograph, Adam. And oh. Adam, absolutely, it was actual, absolutely made up. He thought that was great that, mm. that Ronnie O'Sullivan knew, knew what you know Adam was. That's so they exchanged story. autographs. Ah, what a lovely story. And that'll stay with your, you know, save your son for his rest of his life, won't it? And I bet also Ronnie O'Sullivan probably will remember that too. <laughs> yes, I'm sure, I'm sure he will. Yeah, lovely fella. Well, I wish him luck, of course, as always, in the World Championships. And we will be talking about him on the show with uh, Steve Davis on the 1st of May. So it's great. Yeah. In fact, the 1996 PDC World Championship final with Phil Taylor, of course, is often seen as one of the best matches in the history of the PDC. Although you hit 15 180s and averaged 101.48 in the match, Dennis, I mean, you know, this is 1996. To be averaging over 100 in those days was incredible, uh, which is you know a phenomenal, a phenomenal performance. You were edged out four six by the ruthless brilliance of uh, Phil Taylor. I mean, tell us more, Dennis. I mean, this this was some world final, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, you get to know all these facts and figures after 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 the game. Um, mm. I mean, obviously, is it crucial doubles at the at the uh, at the crucial time? What's what, what's yeah. you know what changes the the outcome from me winning and him winning, and uh, yeah, he did have doubles. a he did have a, a knack of doing that. Um, but I mean, obviously, I won it in '94, and I didn't even turn up mm. uh, in '95. I was I was horrendous. I, I, I remember my first game. We was in uh, we, we was in groups again. Mm. John Lowe were in my group, and I actually lost nine nil. Wow, three three sets to nil. I couldn't hit a I couldn't hit a, a double to save my life, yeah. And I lost anyway. Uh, it was me jockeying me jockeying John in in our group. I beat I beat uh, jockey uh, in a tight game, but uh, obviously it was John what to uh, progress through, hmm. and uh, it were a poor it were a poor defensive title, very yes. poor. Yes, it was but indeed. 96, like you said, Russell. I don't know where that came from, that 100 odd average. I don't think uh, I'd been playing that well. I didn't. That's... When I won it in 94, I never expected much from yeah. that tournament because I, I hadn't been playing well. I just got better each game. Yeah. Well, that's the official average that's, that's registered, 101.48. Yeah, they do tell me so, yeah. That's incredible. Incred incredible averages. I mean, players getting it today, they, they're happy. But, of course, now it's more now, isn't it? 108s and yeah, 109s, yeah, 110s. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And as you quite rightly say, it does it is it is it does come down to the doubles. If you hit the doubles, you'll win the match ultimately. But as long as you can bring the scores down with 140s, 180s, you'll get onto the doubles. You've got to hit them, haven't you? You've really had you certainly have, yeah. Yeah. I Otherwise mean, you're out. 
as Bobby George said, troubles for show, doubles for dough. That's it. <laughs> good old Bobby that's, George. Lovely fellow. Yeah, whether that's his original saying or not, I don't know, but it's a good one. It is a very good one. Very good one. It might be an original Bobby George saying. We, we don't know. I to, I um, Russell, I would just skip uh, 97 final, please. <laughs> I've got that on here because, you know, we've got to mention it, haven't we, really? Because it's another one, you know, the following year in 97. You again met Phil Taylor in the PDC World Final, but you did struck 14 180s. Had a 10 dart leg, which was amazing in those days, uh, and led two sets to nil. And then, however, oh. it was, you know, if you remember, uh, it was also no avail as Phil Taylor won 6-3. Uh, I mean, with these incredible PDC World Finals in mind, Phil Taylor stated, I've got to say this, actually, because I know you're good friends. Phil Taylor stated in his autobiography that Dennis Priestley is the best player he has, Phil Taylor, ever faced. Phil Taylor makes a similar reference to you, Dennis, in in the biography section of his website. Now, you know, that is some accolade bestowed upon you, Dennis, from probably the world's greatest darts player in living history. You were the best player he's ever faced. No, that's not nice of him to say that. The um, reason I said, uh, let's skip 97, I, <laughs> thought, I thought 97 was the 6-0 the drumming I got. But, well, <laughs> no, yeah, we'll good. talk. That must have been 98. We'll talk, yeah. we'll talk about, yeah, we're two sets to nil up and... Uh, and coasting, and then Phil, you know, whether I, I mean, obviously I went off, but Phil got better, mm. and it was a 6 3. Yeah. And of course, Phil was always good from coming from behind, wasn't he? He did it so many times in his in his days as a, as a top professional. He won so many championships coming from behind, but also so many championships and just leading from the beginning as well. He was just a, yeah. a really good all round I mean, player. I mean, obviously, obviously, Russell Darts is easy if you're playing your A game all the time, but yeah. You know, you 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 never you never on your A game. Uh, you know, uh, less you're you're on your A game a lot less than using your B B game. But uh, mm. that's how it goes sometimes. It does indeed. I think that's probably the same in all sports, isn't it? You, you know, whether you're top of the game or whether you're not, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Yeah. You know, it's life, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's how yeah. good you are on your B game. At, it is. And at day. Yeah, hitting doubles. Yeah, getting down to those doubles and getting those punching them in. But despite living in the shadow of Phil Taylor for, I say, much of your career, you have nonetheless accomplished some unique achievements. A couple we've already spoken about, Dennis, as well. You are the only man to date to win both the BDO and PDC World Championships, then the WDC, of course, at the first attempt. That's a huge achievement, Dennis, isn't it? So you won the BDO yeah, that, first attempt and the PDC. Yeah, it's nice to uh, to be remembered by that. I mean, obviously at the time, never never even thought about that until somebody mentioned it. Mm. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a nice achievement. But I'd like to think, uh, you know, from playing in my very first World Championship, I did, I did set uh, uh, records and boundaries what, uh, what needed to be beaten. You know, I I did have the uh, the highest average in in one set, yes. Uh, which which was years and years after, before it was beaten, and I think it was Merv King what beat it. Um, the most one eighties in that embassy 25, 25 one eighties. Uh, lot lots of things. I mean, it, in in any, in any sport, the early the early uh, players and that they, they you know they set set records for for other people to beat. Like Absolutely. Ronnie Strander chase eight world championships mm. to to beat Stephen Henry and and Phil Phil's goal at that time would have been to get by five what Eric Bristow held exactly but little did we know it it to be end up being sixteen you know so yeah. setting setting targets for the for the up and coming uh, players uh, in years to come is is something what's uh, I'm very proud of. Oh, you should be too. And I think today you just mentioned Eric Bristow's five world titles. Of course, I think even today, uh, today's players would struggle to get past five world titles with the way the game is. Um, I think we can probably safely say that with Phil Taylor's 16 world titles, that will never get surpassed. I mean, because the youngest the players now are coming on even younger and younger, better, fitter, sharper, uh, throwing those quality darts as we see today. I mean, just to win one world title will be a fantastic achievement. I mean, look at Luke Little. Everyone's talking about Luke being a, 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 a you know, a, for, a future world champion, which he probably will be. But he's never going to surpass eight, uh, sorry, 16 world titles. I don't think I'll ever get beaten, will it? No, I don't think so. I mean, he'd have to be competing 
at the top of the tree for twenty year plus. Yeah, exactly. To, to to have a you know to have a sniff of sixteen. I mean, nothing's impossible, but uh, I think that I think that one is to be oh, fair. Even though he's, he's he's got the age advantage. Uh, yeah. You know, it in it in the scene at uh, 16, 17 years of age. Yeah, he's now seventeen, isn't he? Winning things, yeah. of course. Um, so you've got to give him. You've got to say he'll win the world championship. I'm sure he will the world title. But how yeah, many times? I mean, he's got ten years on Lou Humphreys, ten eleven years, and you know he's got them years on uh, Michael Smith, and he has. You know, um, it's good who's players. Up, who's coming up behind him? Who's coming up behind uh, Luke Lippman? Yeah. That's the thing to look at. I think there's bound to be some young players there who are better, just as good, or on the verge. Um, is a revelation. There's no, there's no two ways about that. Is a phenomenon um, to 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 do what he's done at 16 years of age. Oh, I, mean, I know he's, I know he's just turned 17 in January, but I just, I mean, I don't know what's going off in in his head. How how he's coping at such a such a tender age. Well, maybe that's his plus point, and maybe as he gets older and it all sinks in, it might destroy yeah, his game. Yeah, that can happen yeah, too. Yeah. Might but, be your what's uh, what's what's keeping him going, yeah. Yeah, the fearless side of things, but and of course, what he's also done, which I found amazing, is he's changed his darts, and he's also changed his dart dart style. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that last week yeah. on on, uh, on Premier League. It just um, just it's it's not much of a stutter. It's just a yeah. a little point. What for a split pause. second, a little poise. When uh, which he when never the, did. When he's let the first one go. Yeah. And it's it's fantastic that a young lad like that's thinking thinking ahead of uh, how he can improve his game. Yeah. I did notice um, what which is a big advantage, and I don't know if you spotted it, Russell. He's uh, he's got extra long points in his darts, and that mm. that's leaving the the treble bed a lot clearer mm. for for the other darts. Good design, I mean, isn't it? I, I knew this. I knew this thirty years ago about. If you if you could play with longer points, but I never I never got that advantage because I always held um, I always held my dart on my finger mm. on my finger or, or or just here at times, and the 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 length of the point was crucial to me. Otherwise, if it was if it wasn't the right length, it would push my fingers further back up barrel. If it was too short, I'd be too near front. Whereas yeah. um, Luke plays. Um, with not touching the the point at all, and they're extra long, and I, I find that a great advantage. What lad? Well, he's he's obviously got great uh, great uh, consultants around him to say, look, you know, the way your throwing style is, you can actually throw a different style of dart, and therefore the long dart points have come in. It works with his throw style, I guess, and it's working, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah, big time. Oh, may it go on forever. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it may, and hopefully he does push these championships. I don't, but I don't think, as you said earlier, that uh, Phil Taylor's sixteen is going to ever get surpassed. Not in our lifetime, not in mine or with Well, be a long time, I think. To be fair, um, well, we'll see. I would have to be in my nineties to to be able <laughs> to see that. Yes, yes, and to be honest, that'd probably be the same as me almost. Also, you you know, we mentioned earlier on, you are the first man to average over 100 in a World Championship final. And you did average that 101.48 in the 1996 WDC World Championship final in that, that 4-6 loss to Phil Taylor. And despite, of course, Phil Taylor's average being uh, almost three points low at 98.52. I mean, he was throwing a lower average. Uh, with those averages, as you say, we 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 discussed. He probably should have won, Dennis, but it, it did come down to, to to doubles, didn't it? As we mentioned earlier on, but he did yeah. only have a ninety eight point five two as opposed to your one oh one four eight. Incredible. Mm. Anyway, it is. that's life. <laughs> that's life. Yes, as I say, that's life, Esther. It is indeed. Yeah, absolutely, Esther Ransom. Absolutely, what a lovely lady she was. I've got a little granddaughter to call Esther as it is. Oh, bless. I thought I'd, I thought I'd slip that one in for her. Oh, why not? If yeah. you ever, ever, ever gets to see this interview. Oh, I'm sure she will. You've got to get it out to all your family, you know, tomorrow when it's released and friends and and uh, for them all to enjoy your, your wonderful show. I mean, you also took part in the Battle of the Champions contest to mark the resolution of the dispute between governing bodies in a matchup of 1994 world champions, you comfortably defeated John Park, obviously BDO, 
Three nil in sets. So another piece of interest in history, Dennis. The first on the Battle of Champions too. I mean, it's it follows you, doesn't it? You're the first in many ways. Yeah, in a lot of um, I believe Phil played Richie Burnett. Mm. Um, it, I think Richie was the '95 winner. Yes. And I was the '94 winner, and John was the '94 winner. Yes. Um, and then there was another challenge match, which. Uh, Delighted the audience. It was uh, Eric versus uh, the great Alan Evans. Oh wow! The Welsh Fireball. Yeah, what a player he yeah. was too. Yeah, so that was that was the uh, that was the lineup at Circus Tavern. Yes, amazing, amazing. But another first in the life of Dennis Dennis Priestley. Wonderful stuff. That <laughs> another title as well. You know, and you could say actually there as well uh, the Battle of the Champions. You are you the undisputed world champion again. So it's twice. Uh, being the BDO and the PDC holder at the same time, you also battled the champions. So you were the undisputed darts champion of the world on two occasions. So that's something <laughs> to take away, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful story. And then in 2007, you made your debut in the Premier League darts, the respected darts competition, of course, in which eight of the best players from the PDC circuit compete against each other in a league format with matches held across Great Britain at different venues, as we still have today, of course. And it's on this evening, by the way, it's Thursday. In the opening weeks, you defeated Roland Shulton, I remember him, Adrian Lewis too, oh, the wonderful Adrian Lewis, gained a draw against Phil Taylor, remarkably, uh, followed by hard-fought wins over Terry Jenkins, Colin Lloyd and Raymond Van Barnefield. Although you failed to maintain that form throughout, your good start proved sufficient to earn you a semi-final place. Once again, however, you went down to a loss, six 11 <laughs> legs to eventual winner, your nemesis, Phil Taylor. Yeah. Uh, your friend and, friend and nemesis, I've got to say. An exciting tournament, Dennis, wasn't it, in 2007? Well, I, I, I'm proud I, of your achievements. I clung on, I clung on for a semi-place semi by, you know, by the... Yeah. Fingernails. Um, I, I, I was I was tiring uh, uh, greatly from week to week. To be fair, yeah. I mean, little did I know uh, that to be that year. Year I'd been, I was uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer as well. Yeah, I did uh, read about that. It, um, yeah, it, it was a it's a tiring ordeal. To be fair, playing in Premier League. And that's why I was a little bit apprehensive about uh, young Luke Little, you know, having a place. I didn't want I didn't want him to to burn him out um, so quickly. Yeah, but he's certainly competing well, isn't he? He's certainly holding yeah. himself. He's holding himself completely. And uh, good luck to him. If, I, if I'd have been if I'd have been asked uh, any advice on the situation, I would definitely have not kept him out of a, a Premier League uh, situation. But mm. I would have used him as a as a guest player every week uh, to play just before the final. It's like it's in Manchester tonight. Yes, I would. I would have had him playing uh, one of the superstars from from around the Manchester area, maybe uh, Dave Chisnell. And then when it was Liverpool, I'd have him playing um, Bunting, Stephen oh, yeah, Bunting, Stephen Bunting and, yeah. and in different places uh, doing that uh, because it's it seems sometimes a little unfair. You've got two semis and the final. Now the first semi gets that chance to rest. Whereas the second semi is more or less straight back on to play the final, they but are. if they've used Luke Littler uh, to play the play the guests and and the best players near each uh, premier venue, I think Absolutely. that would have been a nice way to have introduced him in. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, quite possibly it's a good idea, an innovative idea. Um, yeah, quite possibly. And of course, I do understand. I've, I've heard as well at the Premier League darts, the players before they come out do a nearest a ball shot to see who plays first, who has the darts first. And, of course, you know, that could be a match-winning shot, couldn't it, the nearest the ball? Because if you hold your darts as the player on, you win You win the match. Yeah, well, it proved that, didn't it, yeah. it last week? Um, exactly. It went, uh, went leg for leg with uh, the two Lokes. That's it. And, um, uh, well, when we uh, when we played, we didn't bull up. Um, mm. You know, I, I, like I played, you know, you mentioned a few I played. I played uh, Roland Shorten, but... I might have had the darts when I played Roland the first time. Mm. When we played second time, he he had the he, you know he had the darts because we did play each other twice. Yes. So that wasn't a that wasn't a problem. You know, you had them one time and you didn't have them the next. It was it was simple <laughs> as that. Yeah. But absolutely. this this way they they are bullying up. And I like it's that term. It's crucial. Yeah, that's a great term, isn't it? Bullying up. I like that. 
And uh, yeah. so you've got to practice your bullseyes to make make sure you get the darts when you come out on on the on the Premier League circuit. I think I think we were where we started doing that. I mean, obviously we did it to be Tommy opposite from what the BDO did. They had uh, they had uh, balls in a bag, and if you picked the right colour one out, you went first. Yeah. You know, so I mean, obviously, we we use it as a skill factor to decide who uh, who's right, going right. to go first in the match, and uh, it came down to to bowling up. That's probably why quite a lot of lot of players hit the ball now. Actually, in competitions, they're practicing the ball for the bowling up capability, I suppose. And yeah. Why not, indeed? I, I, did you did you do any uh, research on on the uh, the tournament where the BDO run it and we was all allowed to play? I didn't know. There's only so that, that was. Um, I think that was called the British Classic, and it was played uh, before World Match Play at Blackpool. It was played the week before, and it was played in no, no, an hotel called the Nor Nor Norbeck Castle. Nice. And uh, as luck would have it, I ended up uh, being the first one to win it. Oh well. Which uh, Charlie Croft. <laughs> Which Ollie Croft didn't like. Another first, the, Dennis. <laughs> presenting me with a cheque and, and not a BDO player. I, I beat uh, Andy Pyman Smith in, in the final. Wonderful. And, and then I could see Ollie with gritted teeth yeah. uh, giving me the cheque. <laughs> That's a great story as well, isn't it? One to remember. That's a fantastic story. There you go. Oh, there's me, no, me, and there's Phil, no... me and Phil won the pairs, by the way, as well. Oh, brilliant. That even made it worse for him. So, um, <laughs> but there we are. The BDO doesn't exist anymore. It's gone, long gone. Virtually, so, uh, yeah. So there we are. It's Biggest just the, Russell. They just didn't didn't move with the times. They didn't. I mean, I mean, it it was it was there in front of them that things weren't weren't going right at all. Mm. I mean, if you look in a the BDO used to produce a diary every every year. Obviously, yes, that's what diaries are. But. Uh, if you look at, look at them, in 19, 1998, there was like 12 tournaments on TV or something like that. Yes. You got the, you got, you know, they got, you got the diet year after, and there was like three. I think it was mm. uh, the Embassy, the Windmill World Masters and, and British Open. And that, that, that were about it. So they could see that things were, were rotting away, but uh, yeah. couldn't do anything with it. But the they other thing as well, blood. yeah, they, they did. They blood needed blood younger blood, blood at the top. Yeah. The, the, the other thing about it as well was that the PDC, of course, they made it a joyful event, you know, all the singing and the dancing, you know, a proper, proper event that the fans could enjoy and sing. I mean, you've only got to, you've only got to see Raymond Van, Van Barnefield come out, you know, the fans go absolutely crazy, don't they, when, when he used to come out, Raymond, um, you know, right. Barney's yeah. Army and all this kind of thing. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, of course, the BDO, Silence, silence. And it was like watching dance it, in a library. I mean, that's not yeah. right, is it? I mean, heavens. <laughs> we, um, the very first ones, the very first professionals, uh, mm. obviously myself and everybody, what broke away, and um, we played the PD, PDC uh, tour. We had to, we had to uh, get used to that. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, the ones what's coming in now, they know what to expect. We, we 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 had to learn to get you know to get used to uh, yeah all the noise and booing and miss when you're going for it. You know it's it's still not very nice. Some of the some of the things what 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 do happen? Um, there was mm. like whistle, a whistling uh, escapade uh, a couple of weeks back. You know just whistling just as you're throwing for a double. Yeah, that's that's not good. And and when you've got when you've got players in such. Uh, Sweet throwing uh, style as Luke mm. on prison, Luke Littler and uh, uh, Michael Van Gerwen, Michael Smith. Mm. That just that that one with it such a flowing action. That one little pause at, mm. at the wrong time. It's crucial to them. Probably not so much with my style, where where it was you know looking at yeah. it and and then throwing. So it is crucial to them. Yeah, you don't want that creeping into the game, do you? That's 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 not good news. No, um, but the whole not. party yeah. atmosphere, I, I think, is great. I mean, the, the, the tournaments I put on pre-COVID, of course, I haven't done anything since COVID, but um, I, I, I made sure they were put on with the PDC style of ethics, so singing, dancing on the tables. And I put one on early doors, I think about in 2016, at, at Norwich, the Epic TV studios, and I called it the Norwich Match Play Darts Championships. 
had some great players there as well, you know, Peter Wright and Adrian Adrian Lewis and uh, Mr. Wade, James Wade and co and co. Yeah. Dave Chisnell. I mean, it's fantastic players. Um, in the in the in the practice room, they're all saying to themselves, and uh, I've heard this from Colin Lloyd actually. He said they're all saying it's tonight's tonight's night here, Russell. It's fantastic. It's just like the early days of the Premier League, and I thought that's a great accolade. And it's packed out. The audience was huge. Just after a, a Norwich City Premier League game against Norwich uh, against uh, Newcastle United, so all these people were coming in with their Norwich gear. Peter Wright turned up dressed as a Norwich player with green and white, uh, sorry, green and uh, yellow Mohican and all the the kit, green and green and yellow. Fantastic atmosphere. Um, I could never have done it with a BDO style, library style. That wouldn't have worked. But no, I, you, you, yeah, you've got to give credit to uh, to the sky. Uh, production team, uh, yeah. bringing the music in and etc. Um, right. I mean, if it hadn't been for Sky taking us on in the early early years, yeah, uh, what what uh, what's what's happened would never never have come to fruition. I, I mean, um, you know, that you got Sky uh, doing what they did prof very professionally, and yes. we got we got uh, in a in a tiv, uh, People like Tommy Cox, mm. um, who's not with us now, and yeah, uh, he passed away. Mr. Dick Alex, who just passed away a couple of weeks mm. ago. If it hadn't been for them two, yeah, you know, uh, putting this uh, this breakaway together, it, it wouldn't map. be here. I mean, we were struggling for many years, even mm. even when Sky was on board, we were struggling for money to pay, you know, prize Absolutely, funds yeah. and things like that. And um, I don't know which one, uh, whether it was Tommy or, or Dick, what approached uh, Barry Earn and asked him if he'd like to get on board. And mm. then it went to another stratosphere when Barry came on came on board. <laughs> it would do, wouldn't it, with Barry? <laughs> yeah, he, he did say, he says, if I, can't, uh, if I can't change things around and make things pay within three years, I'll gladly step aside and... Uh, you know, he did, he's, he's done what, what he's done um, with the help of, obviously, the PDC and, and Sky. Yeah. And, and, of and course, we've gone to other broadcasters, haven't we? That's, of course, yeah. But not forgetting the players as well, like yourself and, you know, John Lowe and Eric Bristow. The, the players that really, you know, engineered some of this from a playing point of view, didn't they? They really yeah, pushed. yeah. Uh, Eric, yeah. was, I know, was instrumental behind it. Bless him. Um, fantastic. So, uh, I mean, you look back to the days when you know, go back to the 70s or, or even the 80s and you compare it to today. I mean, it's a different game altogether. It's incredible. And yeah, you've got to thank uh, Barry Hearn and Sky because they put it there and the players too. Yourself, yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we, we broke away 16 players, mm. ended up 14 players. And um, I mean, obviously, your John Laws and uh, Yannick Bristow's and your jockeys and Bob's, they mm. were, they, you know, they, they probably, would, they'll admit it themselves, that they, they would, you know, uh, pass the sell-by date, to be yeah. to be fair. Yeah. And it was like, you know, myself and uh, and uh, Phil and Rod Addington and Alan Warren were, were that, that bit younger. Mm. Uh, I mean, I was I was world number one. I'd, I'd probably more to lose um, yeah. by backing away from the BDO. Yeah, but a brave decision that worked. Congratulations to you well, all. Fantastic. Yeah, we, it's got to be a big thanks to to them fourteen players and uh, definitely. Like, and like us, like I said, Mister uh, Tommy Cox and and Dick Alex yeah, and excellent. and other and others what worked in in tandem with them. Uh, yeah. A guy called John Raby. Mm. Uh, he put money into the situation to, because we we you know we we were robbing Peter to play Paul to, mm. me and Phil lent lent um, lent his prize money back and and so we got uh, we got well paid in, in finish when Barry came on board, you know yes. he gave us his money back and we got extra shares me and me and Phil, which um, you know is big money now. Yeah, it is, and fair play to you too. I mean, your your final big match moments actually in your career came in 2009 when you won the US Open Players Championships and in 2010 when you won the Australian Open Players Championships. So you were still picking up major tournament championships at the end of your, your career, Dennis, and a huge career too. I mean, that's, that's nice, isn't it? Well, I, 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 I recall that one uh, in 2010 in Australia. Mm. We, we was doing a, a tour for... Um, 
uh, a bourbon whiskey brand, the Wild Turkey, and yes. we were doing different venues. And I wasn't actually, uh, it wasn't on my itinerary to to play in the Australian Masters. And uh, Richie Burnett and Rod, Ar uh, Rod Arrington and uh, Alan Warren uh, persuaded me to, mm -hmm. to fly, get an early flight. We got an early flight from the Gold Coast. We were just on a show a bit into Sydney. Yeah. We got registered in time, and uh, and look would have it. I, uh, I it. Uh, actually won. <laughs> uh, being being a 60, 60 year old person. Yes, exactly. A oh, wonderful story. Absolutely fantastic. But I didn't know about the fifty nine one. What 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 did I win? Well, the two thousand nine, you won the US yeah, Players Championships. Did I? Yes. Where does it say where whereabouts that? Oh, I I didn't research the location, no, but no. it's there in history on the history. Yeah, right. You are the US Open <laughs> Players Champion of two thousand and nine. Yeah, right, because we played America quite a lot, as I, as yeah. I said, we had to go over to uh, to to form some type of uh, ranking system. Of course, and they're only ones what would let us play because it was yeah. in their constitution that they, you know they can't stop uh, yeah. people uh, competing. And uh, you know we we played in uh, in New York and Atlantic City, Los yes. Angeles, Las Vegas. Wonderful times. Chicago, Boston. Chicago. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Great cities. Great places to go. Yeah. I yeah. I of those myself. Absolutely. But like I, but like I said, we 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 there's own flights to pay, mm. and uh, as hotels. So you know you you got to <laughs> you got to play well to to cover your costs. Absolutely right. Yeah, and that's the incentive, isn't it? Get your money back at the very least and make some if you can yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely that's right. how uh, me and Phil looked at it. Yeah, good stuff. And at the start of 2015, you announced that you had retired from professional darts, but you would still do exhibitions. And I know you still do those as well. It's fantastic to see. It's all about timing with these decisions, isn't it, Dennis? So how easy or difficult was that decision, Dennis, to finally hang up your darts? I mean, it's a tough it was, one. It? it was. Was it? It was two fifteen. Was it? Um, yeah, twenty fifteen. Well, I haven't. I haven't, uh, I haven't touched the dart for oh two and a half year. I don't. I don't even know where they are. Oh, wow. um, crikey! I retired from the exhibition scene two and a half years ago. Mm. Um, I did all the work. What was in my diary uh, during the COVID? Uh, yeah. The people what came back to me. Uh, wanting me still to do the exhibitions, and I yeah. completed all them. And and uh, unfortunately, in the first few months of COVID, I lost um, a great friend of uh, mine who used to drive me all over. And um, yeah, they said, Mr. Mr. yeah, Mr. Trevor Jones. And I was I was going to the exhibitions, and it just wasn't the same because mm. I used to say to him many a time when it. I, Look, when you've when you've had enough of driving me and looking after me uh, in exhibitions and tournaments, just say the word and we'll pack in. Mm. Oh, and it, it, it comes straight back. Well, what we're we going to do with ourselves if we do that? <laughs> That's but the then trouble, when it, it came to an end in dying, uh, it's four year in April actually, um, April eighteenth. He went in. Uh, he went in hospital third of April, which was yet like four years yesterday. Yep. He had his birth, 67th birthday on the 11th of April and died on the 18th, oh, which sad. was a massive shock. And I know we couldn't go and see him in hospital. And I, it, well, last thing on my mind that he'd, um, he'd pass away. Yeah, I never even get it to thought that he, he would die. Mm, that's awful. An awful fall. Yeah. But it's a fact of life. It happens to everybody. There's one thing yeah. you can't get out of. I can remember someone no. saying to me young when I was no. younger, there are two things in life, Russell, that uh, you can't avoid, and that's paying taxes and uh, and death. And I've always looked at it for, hold on a minute, there's only one thing in life you, can, you can't avoid, and that's death. You can avoid paying your taxes. You know, that's my fun, <laughs> funny side to that. That's, that, yeah, that's <laughs> fun of how I am, yeah. anyway. That's Lester Piggott. Absolutely, we yeah. Can't. Well, he, he yeah, didn't avoid. He, uh, he evaded, have. didn't he? He got prison sentence for that. Yeah. Ken Dodd got away with it nicely. He did indeed. That was but, a great tale I was told about Ken Dodd. Uh, he uh, he elected to be tried by his peers in Liverpool. Twelve just men, <laughs> twelve Liverpoolians that they were never going to cop. No, exactly. <laughs> a dear, a what a character love, he was. A dear love, Ken Dodd. I mean, he was. I was a great move that anyway. Oh, great character too, Ken Dodd. Incredible, yeah. incredible man. So. Look at the clock, crikey. Uh, so, Dennis, what are you now planning, be it in darts-related or something completely new? What's your next life challenge? 
Well, I'm I'm 74 in July. I mean, yeah. I, I ain't got any challenges. I, um, no. I I do VIP work when asked, um, uh, especially with this seniors tournament. I was asked to play in the seniors, uh, but I thought, well, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I wasn't really up for it. It didn't mean practicing and etc. Yeah, yeah. I'd lost me, I'd lost my good friend. If 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 my friend had, Trevor had been still alive, I would have played in in the yeah. early uh, early ones, but. And I thought, no, I'm not going to show myself up for the sake of a few bob yeah, first round uh, losers. So yeah. I just didn't bother. And I now, don't blame you. Now Jason uh, and his his crew who run the seniors, they asked me to do VIP work. They let they let so so many people in. What pay extra? They let them in an hour earlier, and they uh, they get the programs and they get the things signed and they ask questions and. So Get it's to just meet the great VIP. iconic dark player in Dennis Priestley. VIP, a bit of VIP work, yeah. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Keeps you keeps your hand in, as they say. That's a fantastic well, thing. Keeps my voice in. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't even know where my darts are. Where my darts are. They'll be right. rusty if I, when I find them. Yeah, if you find them, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, you've had a great, great career in darts. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely iconic. And, you know, as always on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show, we could talk forever, Dennis, about your life and, and an amazing life it is. It has been as well in professional darts. And, of course, your life in general. You are really an iconic player. And on that base, if we do uh, meet up out in Tenerife um, end of this year, beginning of the next year, then uh, we could even do, uh, you know, a little on stage piece um, with the... You know, from Tenerife. Yeah, from Tenerife. We could do a, you know, the world of Dennis, Dennis the Menace, uh, there as well. Why not? Russell... Alan, Alan Hudson's going to be going out. I think in uh, September, and he wants me to go out and do a, a piece with him as well. So a football yeah. player. So that'd be good. Oh yeah. yeah. Kevin Spielick, uh, was uh, one of the original fourteen. He's he's retired out there for for the health of his uh, good lady wife. Wow. So we uh, we get to see how. Uh, Kevin every year. Nice. Yeah, he was a great left-handed player, Kevin. Yeah, no, that's good, isn't it? You've got someone there that you can still meet up yeah. with and have some discussions yeah. about the world of darts. Why well, not? We, <laughs> we are, I used to meet up with, with Eric every year in Tenerife as well. We'd yeah. have a drink and, and John Law. Yeah. Uh, they were obviously... always there playing golf, weren't they, every year? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful memories. Wonderful memories. Yes, indeed. certainly is. But it's been a huge pleasure as always. Uh, and as always, um, the pleasure is all mine. And of course, the show's audience, when this podcast is released on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show and the Lord Russell Baker YouTube channel. Thank you, Dennis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Dennis Priestley. Big round of applause going on here. Fantastic story, Dennis. Thank you. You're an absolute gentleman. Do you mind staying on for a couple of minutes just whilst I wrap up and finish the show? No problem. No Brilliant, problem. Dennis. I'll leave you, leave you to it, yes. Gentlemen, as always. <laughs> The next episode on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show is The King of Spin Wins the Ashes, where my special guest will be Ashley Giles, who is a former English first-class cricketer who played 54 test matches and 62 one-day internationals for England before being forced to retire due to a recurring hip injury. Ashley Giles played the entirety of his 14-year first-class career at Warwickshire County Cricket Club. Ashley was also 90, 90 sorry, in 2006 New Year's Honours List, where he was awarded an MBE for his role in the successful Ashes winning squad of 2005. So a very exciting cricket podcast on the 11th of April 2024. So, yeah, another exciting show to look forward to on the World of Lord Russell podcast talk show, available, of course, on all podcast media platforms and the Lord Russell Baker YouTube channel. TV channel. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the on, on the inside. So until then, it's au revoir from him and au revoir from me.